Once upon a time, in a little cottage in the woods, lived a mother goat and her little goats leading a happy life. The little goats were very cute. They all were like toys. Mother goat, like all mothers, loved her little goats very much. She protected them from all the wild animals in the forest. One day, before she left the house to find food in the forest, she called her little goats next to her and, "My dear children, I am going into the forest. Do not open the door for anyone. If the wolf comes into the house, he will eat all of us alive. He is very shifty. He will disguise himself into different shapes and try to fool you. So how will we recognize him?" The wolf has a rough voice, and I have a soft and sweet voice, so you can recognize him from his low and rough voice right away. Right when she was leaving, the mother goat remembered something else. She turned to her little goats. Ah, one more thing: the wolf's feet are black, and mine are white. You can also recognize him from his feet. Don't worry, mother. We can protect ourselves. You can count on us. Mother goat kissed her little goats one by one. And headed into the woods. The wolf was watching them from afar. When he saw Mother Goat leaving, he waited a while, and then he came in front of the cottage and knocked on the door. Who is it? Little goats, open the door. Your mother is here. I brought nice food for you all. But the little goats recognized the wolf's rough voice right away. Without opening the door, they yelled out, "You're not our mother." Her voice is sweet and more beautiful. You're the wolf. You can't fool us. The wolf got very angry because he could not fool the little goats. So he went to the shop. Bought a big piece of chalk and ate it. Now his voice sounded much softer, so he went back to the cottage and knocked on the door again. This time, the wolf started to talk with his soft voice. My little goats, open the door. It's your mother. I brought food from the forest for all of you. Hearing the wolf's soft voice, the little goats thought that it was really their mother this time. Just when they were about to open the door, one of them shouted, "Wait, wait! Let's look at the feet from underneath the door." Of course, when the little goats looked from underneath the door, they saw the wolf's black feet. So they yelled again without opening the door, "We will not open the door for you! Our mother's feet are not black; they are white. You're the wolf." As furious as he was, the wolf left. This time, he went to the bakery. When the baker saw the wolf in front of him, he was very surprised. I'm a vegetarian now, so I will eat pastry from now on. Could you give me some flour? The wolf came out of the bakery with a little sack of flour. When he got near the cottage, he opened the sack and poured all the flour on his feet. Now his feet were all white. The shifty wolf knocked on the door for the third time. My little goats, open the door. It's your mother. I have brought food for all of you from the forest. First, show us your feet, so we know it's you, mother. The wolf showed them his feet with flour. When the little goats saw the white feet, they believed that it was their mother and opened the door. And what did they see? The wolf was standing right there in front of them. The little goats did not know what to do. They started to run around yelling. <laughs> Don't waste your time. I will catch all of you. One of the little goats went under the desk. The second one into the bed. The third one into the chimney. Fourth kid hid in the kitchen. The fifth one got into the closet. The sixth hid behind the curtain. And the seventh kid went into the giant clock on the wall. But the shifty wolf was quick, and one by one he caught them all from wherever they were hiding. Run! Run! Come here! Don't run! I will catch you all! I said stop! Arr. Arr. 
the only one he could not find was the one hiding in the clock. He was already full, so he gave up on looking for them and head out. There was a big yard a little further from the cottage. The wolf lay under a tree on the yard and started to sleep, snoring. Short while after, the mother goat returned home. When she saw the door open, she knew something bad had happened and started to scream. When she entered the house, she was shocked. The tables and chairs were all upside down. Curtains were torn. The beds were all messed up. The pillows and sheets were all on the floor. Mother Goat looked for her little goats but could not find them anywhere. She started to yell out their names, one by one, but not one answered. Finally, it was time to call the last one's name. Only then she heard a high-pitched voice. Mother Goat ran to the grandpa clock and took her kid out of there. Mother Goat and kid hugged. The little goat started to tell the story, crying. The wolf came in disguise and he thought it was you and opened the door. The wolf ate all my brothers. <laughs> <laughs> Mother Goat was very upset. She cried for her little goats. With only one of her kids remaining, she walked out and started to go towards the yard. After a while, they saw the wolf sleeping under a tree. He snored so bad that the branches of the tree were shaking. Mother Goat observed the wolf for a while. She realized that inside his tummy, some things were moving. Oh my God! Can it be that my goats are in his tummy and they're still alive? She had a plan. She turned to her kid. Run home, bring me a needle, thread and the scissors. When the little kid was running home, Mother Goat collected six big rocks from the floor. After a while, the little goat came back with a needle, thread and the big scissors. Mother Goat cut open the wolf with the scissors. She saw one of her little goats right away. And then the other ones started to appear one by one. They were all healthy. Mother Goat couldn't stay still from the joy she had. All the little goats hugged their mothers with joy. Mother, Mother, we love you. They were all full of joy. Ah, oh, my little goats, you're safe. Mother Goat put the rocks she collected carefully inside the wolf. Then she stitched his tummy with the needle and thread. The wolf was sleeping so deep he'd not feel anything. He did not move. Mother Goat and her little goats quickly got away. When the wolf woke up, he stood up. His tummy hurt really bad. He thought to himself that it was because he ate too many goats. Because his tummy was full of rocks, he got really thirsty. He came next to the river to drink some water. But when he was walking, the rocks were hitting each other. My tummy feels so heavy and full. It's as if all the goats I ate turned into rocks. He wanted to kneel down and drink some water. Due to the rocks being so heavy, he lost his balance and slipped into the water. Oh, help! Help me! I'm drowning! Help! Yelled out for help, but no one helped him. He could not bear the weight of the rocks anymore and went under into deep waters. When they saw what happened, Mother Goat and her little goats ran to the river. The wolf is dead! Yippee! The wolf is dead! The wolf is dead! Yippee! Woohoo! Hand in hand, they all started to dance and jump around. 
From that day on, Mother Goat and her seven little goats had a peaceful and happy life in their cottage in the forest. Once upon a time, the animals in a farm were left with no food. The little red hen decided to wander around the field to look for something to eat. She first went next to the cow. Will you come with me around the field to find something to eat? No, I won't. It's too hot. I can't be bothered to walk. She then went next to the pig. <laughs> Will you help me find food? No, I can't come. It's too hot and I can't be bothered to move. Later then, went next to the dog. <laughs> Will you help me find food? No, I can't. It's too hot and I can't walk when it's hot. And in the end, went next to the duck. Will you come with me to find something to eat? No, I can't. It's too hot. I can't get out of the water. When nobody bothered to come with her, the hen decided to leave the farm on her own. As she walked, she found some wheat grains on the ground. She was very happy. She returned to the farm. She decided to plant the wheat grains. She thought that her friends would help her. Cow, look, I found wheat grains. Would you like to plant them with me? No, I already told you it's too hot. The hen went over to the pig. Pig, look, I found wheat grains. Would you like to plant them with me? No, I can't. The weather is way too hot for this. She then went next to the dog. Dog, look, I found wheat grains. Would you like to plant them with me? No, it's way too hot. And at last she went next to the duck. Hey, duck, I found some wheat grains. Would you like to plant them with me? No, I can't. I can't leave the water in this heat. Well, I'll plant them myself. When she saw that no one wanted to help her, she decided to plant them herself. Weeks had gone by. The rainy days had begun. The seeds had sprouted. But all the wild grass in the garden needed some cleaning. Who's going to help me clean the grass? It's too muddy now. I can't help you. I'm not up to it. I won't leave my spot. I'll get dirty. Can't do it. Don't feel good today. I can't help. In that case, I'll do it on my own. The little red hen began to clean the wild grass amongst the sprouts. Not long after, the wheat began to grow. It was now time to harvest the ripe wheat. The hen went next to her friends and asked if they would help her harvest the crop. Hey cow, buddy! Wheat has grown! Will you help me harvest the crop? No, I can't. Hey pig, guess what? The wheat has grown. Will you help me harvest the crop? No, I can't. I won't. Hey, my body dog. The wheat has grown. Will you come and help me harvest the crop? Who oh, me? Of course not. Hey, ducky ducky. The wheat has grown. Will you help me harvest the crop? Of course I can't. Okay, I'll do it on my own. The little red hen worked till night time. She harvested the wheat kernels, one by one, all by herself. It was now time to turn the wheat to flour. Off she went to ask for help from her friends. Hey guys! We must grind the wheat to make flour. Who would like to help me? I can't help. It's time for me to give milk. I can't move from my spot. <laughs> I can't help either. It's nap time for me. I can't help at all. Can't help. Need to get into the water and cool down. The hen ground the wheat in the mill and turned it into flour. Now let's make some delicious bread. The hen went next to her friends and wanted to give them one last chance. 
cow. I'm going to make bread. Would you like to help me? Nope, I can't. I'm in no situation to work. What about you, pig? <laughs> Not today. I'm too tired to help today. No, no, I can't. No, I can't. And besides, I don't know how to make bread. This time, the hen was very angry. All by herself, she went to the kitchen. First, she made bread with the flour she had grounded. Then she gave it a form. And at last, put it in the oven and waited for it to bake. After the amazing smell of the bread had spread, she took it out of the oven, went out to the garden and sat on the table. Later, called out to her friends. Hey guys, the bread is ready. Who would like to eat it with me? Seeing the amazing bread in front of the hen, in a flash they all went next to her. No, I want some. Oh, me too. Right when I'm so hungry. Great timing, hen. Hey, me too, hen. I love bread. Come on, let's eat. No, I can't. I can't. I did everything on my own. Only I deserve to eat it all on my own. With great appetite, the hen began to eat her bread but couldn't handle the fact that her friends were so hungry. From now on, if you promise to help, I will share my bread with you. All the farmyard animals were ashamed and sorry. They knew she was right. We, we promise you have no more laziness. The hen knew her friends learned a good lesson, so she shared her bread with them. With an amazing appetite, they were now so happy with a full tummy.